Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for watching and subscribing to Sony Commercial Christian Center. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. My soul magnifies the Lord. He's the mighty, he's the mighty one. <coughs> you and my My soul magnifies the Lord. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God to salvation to anyone who believes. Praise God Almighty. The Lord in our midst is mighty. Father, I magnify you, O God. I give you praise. I declare you are your Lord over the universe. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the much less sovereign God. No one can rival you. The only creator, the only God. The only living God. We bless you. We praise 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 you. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Be glorified, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sharpness of your word. For the effectiveness of your word. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's full of life. Full of power. Yes, Lord. It's sharper than any true, any sword, piercing through to the band of sin and thunder of soul and spirit, bones and marrows. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We come out with power. We come out with conviction. We come out, oh God, with potency. We come out accurately. And with exactitude, oh God, and yet with simplicity. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless both the speaker and the hearer. And those that contribute in Jesus' name, be glorified. In Jesus' name, O oh God, I pray that that which we share from your word, Lord, that you activate, O oh God, the power of your word, O oh God, by signs and wonders. Let it explode in the heart of those that hear. Father, Lord, I, I produce result for which it was sent in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for anointing your word. Praise God. Yes, uh, this person is singing. (coughs) 
His name is um, Theophilus Sunday. Ah, I, I, I never, I never, I never heard from him before. But um, he's good. Yes, thank you very much. Ah, Kyle, God bless you. Praise God. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's stop here. I can listen to this forever. I like his, um, mm, I like it, I like it. Okay, praise God. Well, um, it's been about um, a couple of weeks about that uh, we didn't show up. Uh, sorry about that, those of you who have been waiting for us. Um, now we're going to pick up from where we left off. <clears throat> the last time we were during the live cast, and they, they, we dealt with the topic uh, pain that purifies, pain that purifies. So we want to follow on from the, which is like part two, but with a slightly modified <coughs> title, as the, we call today, is we're dealing with the pain that produces. Okay? The pain that produces it, it, we're both today's theme and, uh, and the on the today's topic and the or content and last week they, they kind of um, uh overlap uh but uh, with a slightly different emphasis today praise god <clears throat> all right <clears throat> last week we started by um stressing on the the uh, inevitability or the ubiquity uh, of problems um pain and suffering job chapter 14 verse 1 says any man born of a woman is of short days and full of trouble and of course job you know, <laughs> job uh, is qualified to tell us one or two things about pro uh, problems and sufferings um so i will let these um, um existence of sufferings and problems and in fact evil to the fallenness of creation we live in a fallen world um, including uh, the, f the fall of humanity of mankind um, and this results in natural disasters accidents um, animal devouring people people dying of poison um, misadventures sin um, wickedness and all, uh, all sorts of things and as we head to towards the cutting force, toward the end of the of the ages, you know, of, of end of the age, I would say you know, this present age, uh, the Bible made it abundantly clear that we are we living we are living in the last days. Um, so people who don't believe might not think so. Uh, the social evolutionists think that uh, we are progressing to a state of utopia. Ah. <laughs> Okay, wait forever, wait forever. Uh, it, it, it's not going to happen. If anything, we are we, we the, the, this this world, this world system, is descending to to a state of um, um, dystopia, rather. Um, so so as we as we approach the end, as we accelerate towards the end of the age cutting force, the frequency, the rampancy and intensity of suffering and pain are on the increase. They've increased. It's as if evil has bared its fangs. Man's inhumanity to man is most rife in our day and going to get worse as we progress or as we yes uh, uh, accelerate towards the end of the age human beings have become more vicious against each other Paul says in um, fact I need to read that uh, second um, Timothy, yes, I started to open it. Second Timothy chapter 3, um, from verse 1. Let me just read that. Wait. 
Um, it says basically, in the last days, come on now, open up. In the last days, um, that perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Okay? In fact, it's not by saying that, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times shall will come. Perilous, dangerous, crazy times. Yes? Shall come. And the reason in verse 2 is that men, men, not animals, not lions, not tigers, not dogs, not wolves, men, human beings, men and women will be lovers of themselves. It's called hedonism. You know, um, lovers of themselves, um, lovers of money. Uh, lovers of themselves, actually, that's called narcissism. Uh, lovers of pleasure, yes, that's also there. That's hedonism. Yeah, lovers of money, boasters, proud, arrogant, you know, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. That's uh, a, that's un totally ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers, despisers of good. They look at what is good and they hate it. You know, they will despise, they will poo-poo, they, they, they will rubbish, they will degrade that which is good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Praise God. They will have a form of godliness. Do you know how many religions we have in this world? Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. It's not the kind of piety or godliness that transforms their lives. Praise God. No, that, see, that just describes what we're seeing, what's happening in our world today. People are you know, selfish, egocentric, wicked and you hear what is happening you hear what is happening so yesterday uh, the news came about uh, about this lovely um praise and worship leader well known in nigeria um Osinachi Wachuku, who they say that you know the husband you know uh, um, I mean, obviously, it's it's it's, uh, it's um it's not going to it's, it's not gone through the uh, court process yet. But from from, from uh, information filtering out, that you know, is that um, she died uh, after being beaten and kicked in the chest by the husband. That's not the first time. I mean, that happens. It happens all over the world. So it's happening in the family. It's happening outside the family. People are just just vicious, almost like. You can you can avoid being harmed and killed by by the most ferocious animals, tiger, lions, you know, snakes and uh, dangerous thing. You can av avoid those things to a measure. But how are you gonna how are you gonna avoid the danger that your fellow human beings poses? How human beings have become the 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 the, 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 the humanity's worst enemy. Terrorism, banditry, robbery, rapists, sodom is, uh, is a, a sodomist or sodom, yeah. Every kind of hurt that human beings suffer are carried that most of it, most of, of the hurt and suffering, they are caused by human beings, directly or indirectly. You know. In a directly or, or remotely. How many times have we heard of people, some kind of sh you know, faceless people, spiking children's food? You know, the uh, formula that babies, babies eat, they spike it from source. Anyway, let me. Let me now, Jesus puts it this way in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. It says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold, will grow cold. Iniquity, 
wickedness, evil, treachery shall about shall multiply. The love of many will be cold. All right. So this is this is a source of pain. Right. Yes. Besides that, we express pain for situations, circumstances, things, and and uh, of course, as, as I said last week, we we also cause pain to people either deliberately or otherwise. We cause pain to ourselves either that by the things we allow, the choices we make. Now the question is that: Is there a purpose to pain? Yeah. Again, as I said last week, there's a branch of theology that that uh, this with that theodicy, this with that aspect why evil and all that so to just continue from <clears throat> from where we left off last week oh no last last episode we were talking about pain that purifies so in spite of the 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 sharpness of pain the discomfort of pain the the hollowness of pain it has the potential to purify. God uses it to purify us. And I've been in on that. I'm bidding to, uh, today's um, uh, session on that. That that the pain that we suffer is made to produce something. Yes, it means made to produce something. Yes, first of all, it's meant to purify. It, it, it has the ability to purify us. Um, again, we saw that in um, different places we saw it last week. I'm going to go back to, the, to um, Romans 5 to start with. Um, but but let, let me look at this scripture here. In First Peter. First Peter chapter 4. Mm. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me just read there. Let's read it. If, First Peter 4 um, It says here Oh 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 Okay that's not let me, Okay let me just read it first I'm going to come back to First Peter chapter 4 To read the uh, Get a fuller uh, Context But uh, verse Yes, verse 1. Uh, which verse of the Okay, NIV. That would be. So, therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, say, arm yourselves also with the same attitude. Because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. Ah. Whoever. Let me look at this. NIT. New Living Translation. So, then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourself with the same attitude. Hear that attitude he had. And be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you are finished with sin. Okay? So, there is a purging effect that a purifying effect that, that um, our suffering has. But it, it depends on our attitude. You see, that's chapter I said, arm yourself with the same attitude. Have the same attitude. So it depends whether we benefit from pain or we are destroyed and damaged by it. Depends on our attitude to it. Arm yourself with the same attitude. Okay. But this attitude again depends on what we know. Let, let, let's let's let, let, me, let me read James, uh, James one. James one NKJV. <clears throat> Very popular. It says here, yeah, verse from verse two, my uh, my brethren, my brethren. Okay, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it. So it depends on how you count. The person says you should, you should, you should put it if you are doing a, your your um, account book, yeah, you know, 
put it under profit, put it under asset. That was saying, count it all joy, put it under joy, not a disaster. It's not denying the pain of suffering. It's not denying that it can be harrowing. It's not denying that it's, it is not comfortable. In fact, nobody begs for pain. Nobody. Unless something's wrong with that person. Okay? But when it comes, because it must come, suffering happens. In fact, the Bible says that, you know, tells us that it's through suffering that we enter into the kingdom. That we possess the kingdom. So, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Why should, why should anybody suggest that I should count all joy? He said, knowing that. Ah, so the attitude we adopt uh, um, in the face of suffering depends on our knowledge, what we know. If we know what is going on behind the curtain, say so knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. Let it cook. Don't, don't Come on, come on! Don't um, <laughs> don't jump, don't jump off, you know, prematurely. Let it have its complete work. Let it have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Yes. But it says, if any of you lack wisdom, even in that situation, let him ask God. Let him ask God. Let God give us insight. Let God give us what to do in the midst of, you know. Why the fire is raging. Say so he will give us liberally without upbraiding us. Okay. Okay. Romans 5. I love the scriptures. Romans 5. Hallelujah. Uh, let me read from verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only that but we also glory in tribulation Abba say we glory we boast you know we rejoice we boast we in tribulation Knowing again, it depends on what you know. Then, what we know depends on our attitude. If we don't know what's going on, of course, we murmur, we complain because I mean, I mean what, what, what's the point? What's the point? Suffering, but knowing that, ah, do you know that tribulation produces perseverance? And that I appreciate we're talking about, and perseverance will produce what character. A character will produce what? Hope. Say so now, this hope does not disappoint. You will not be disappointed. Ever. The expectation of the righteous will never be will not be cut off despite the suffering. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has, who was given to us. Praise God. Ah. Uh, you see that? Hallelujah. 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 I love it. I love it. Okay. 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 We're going to see other scriptures too. So, how we respond to pain, our attitude towards it, is an important factor whether we are going to, it's going to work for us or work against us. Yeah. It depends on our outlook. Like I said, like, the, 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 there's people they call the hedonists, the people who enjoy pleasure. You no, know, they love pleasure. They, 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 their attitude is no, uh, um, they, it's just pleasure, 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 pleasure. You know, they picurists. You know, they, they, they seek to avoid pain at all costs.
And so when that is not possible, they seek food, maybe alcohol or drugs, whatever it is, to numb the pain. You know? The Stoics, the Stoics will just soak a fire that's life and they'll grit their teeth and bear it. But without any hope, any expectation. They lack the knowledge, they lack the understanding that this is supposed this is producing something. Because they are not of faith. They lack the spiritual insight that we are sharing here. Now, that, that, based on our knowledge, there, of course, there are two kinds of two broad attitudes. Yeah, um, there are people. Yeah, there are people who, when they experience suffering or pain, it tenderizes their heart. It softens their heart. Yeah, they become more patient, they become more empath empathic, they become compassionate. So this the, the, the experience of suffering softens their heart. It breeds compassion, it produces compassion in them, it enriches and refines and matures them. Like, like we saw in James, James, it produces patience. Praise God. I want to read from 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 uh, First Peter. Please give First Peter. I want the full version, full, full, full. Okay, First Peter, KJ, NKJV. Uh, what is it saying? Yeah, um, we read verse one already, and I'm not going to read that again. Let's go to verse twelve. First Peter twelve. We're talking about the faith that produces, that produces something in us. Beloved, verse 12, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. See, don't, don't see it as strange. Don't see it as, wow, why me? <laughs> it says fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. See, it's not strange, it's not uncommon. Say, but rejoice. Uh, James tells us the same thing to cast out joy. But rejoice to the extent that you are partaking, you that you partake of Christ's suffering. That when His glory is revealed, ah, see, see, see this. The what? Say when you're suffering, particularly for Christ, and you have the right attitude, godly attitude towards whatever suffering you're going through. He says, you should rejoice. To the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory, Christ's glory is revealed, and it will be revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Praise God. You will shine. Now it says here that if you are reproached for the name of Christ, if you are reproached, if you are mocked, if you are insulted, if you are blamed, if you are castigated for the name of Christ, Say, blessed are you. You are blessed. You are you. If you suffer for this name of Christ, you are blessed. You are fortunate, if I can use that word. You are you are blessed. You are to be envied. For for that means because the spirit of glory, ah, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you in that suffering. You see that? Yay! And when the spirit of glory and it's resting on you, it produces something. The suffering is not in vain. That's the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and exalted him to the highest point of the universe. Say, so on their part, is blasphemed. Yes. Yes. On their part, those persecutors, he's blasphemed. He's ridiculous. They're alive, you know. But on your part, he's glorified. But it says something in 15. It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as a wife beater and killer, as an evil doer, as a busybody, as a kidnapper, as a bandit, as a terrorist, as a corrupt person. Mm -hmm. 
as a busybody in other people's matters. A nosy parker. <laughs> so yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, cause exhibiting Christian virtues, let him not be ashamed. Even if they put you to prison, you are in a good company. I will, I will say, Jesus was, uh, was locked up. Jeremiah was locked up. Uh, who again? Peter was locked up. Uh, Paul was locked up. Um, um, John was. Yeah, what well, John was also detained, you know? Yeah? So, so you're in a, in, in, you're in a great, 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 great company. As long as it's for righteousness' sake. Say, so let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Praise God. Have a good attitude. Count the old John. Knowing this. Praise God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, yeah, some people, they go through suffering. It, it softens their heart. They become compassionate. You, have, you see them, maybe they, 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 if they suffer, or you see some people, maybe they lost a child through uh, what kind of disease. They set up charity to ensure that no other family suffers from that. They are compassionate. They reach out. There are this lady in Nigeria. Um, I forgot her name. She's a doctor. Um, she, young doctor for that matter. She runs the what is it called? Uh, Nigerian the air ambulance. She she lost a sister. I think she lost a sister uh, years ago. And they could not find no, she sister died because of the help did not come on time. So she died. The ambulance service was uh, nothing to write home about. Because of that, she got into this pain. Like something was out of her pain and suffering, something was built in her. She now runs the ambulance um, services that you know, the South Nigeria as well as other West African countries. I've forgotten her name now, but she's from Southwest Nigeria. You know? The pain that she went through produced something genuine, something precious that blessed humanity. There are others. A lot of charities we see today, you know, there was a result of uh, people going through serious difficulties. Some abused women, they set up shelters for other abused women. Okay? Some children, some people who are abused as kids, they set up uh, um, charities, organizations that, that protect children from further abuses. Their hearts have been softened. And it produced such a beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful work. Resort that blesses humanity that glorifies God. But there, there are others also when they go through pain, their hearts are hardened. Hardened, they become mean, they become resentful and bitter, they become vindictive, they become they become hostile, they become cold and unfeeling. Why? The difference is in the nature of the heart. Now this is, uh, somebody uh, taught me this when I was in Bible school. Uh, a le a lecturer. He said, the same sunshine, the same heat from the sun that shines or that um, Well, sunshine and the heat and the light, whatever that shines on the clay, on the clay, shines on the wax. Both the clay and the wax, they experience the same heat and the same uh, rays from the, from the sun. But the effects are different. 
same sun, sunshine that hardens the it will, you know that hardens the clay softens the wax so the problem then the issue is not the sun the sun the issue is the nature of those elements the same trial two people can go through the same trial one comes out purified so one comes out compassionate it produces mercy compassion empathy you know and then you know it's just ability to just feel for others but another person comes out of that same trouble hard wicked in fact when i uh, when i was in university there used to be a lecturer thankfully he did not lecture me but he was in uh, one of the departments before exams whereas other lecturers will tell you okay exam is coming study hard um make sure you you revise you know whatever i know Get, just yeah i want to see you do well yeah don't be afraid don't be nervous just do your work if you do your work nothing to fear uh, you know this man would come up and said that when he was in university that he never nobody gave him a more than a b no lecturer gave him more than a b so if you expect to get a more than a b from him you are a joker he said before the exam he said that nobody will score more than a b in his in his subject his course no but you've not you've not started this the exam is not yet but he tell you after teaching you you know for the whole term of semester say you know but no matter how brilliant no matter how much research you've done no matter how much you put on that paper you're not sorry more than a b because i never got a more than a b when i was a student thank god he never taught me that's a wicked 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 person of course there are some people who say no, you know, if they don't sleep with, with girls you know female students they, they, they're not going to pass them or if the, if the guys don't buy their, if they don't, people don't buy their handouts or whatever, or their books, they're not going to pass them. Wickedness. Okay, okay. So, this, this binary, this different res, uh, response, it depends on our attitude and it depends on what we know, who we are trusting. But, this evening and last session we did is just try to encourage us and in the face of what we see in the world sometimes you know you have news here this news here, you have the war of killing here of uh, of uh, just some people just you know, even wickedness in high places of bad politicians you just at times it can be very it can it, it can be very debilitating the Bible talk about the, that this, the soul of Lot was vexed. Say the, 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 that righteous man, his righteous soul was vexed because of the iniquity in Sodom. Yeah, it can be very debilitating. It can weary you. The, the instance of rampancy of evil, the frequency of it. You open newspaper, of course, you're like, what? Human beings are capable of, of doing this? In every field of human endeavor, wickedness. So sometimes we experience it. Yeah, a lot of times God, God shees us from some of these things. But when he allows us to experience it, my encouragement is that we should not we should have the right attitude. We should not murmur. We should not uh, um, get hardened, hard, get hard-hearted. We should not despair. We should not fear. Because as we trust God, as long as we are trusting God, he knows 
how to resist the lower strength it will it assess all things work together for good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, all those things will combine together for our glory and for our good. Jesus himself, the Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffers. Okay? So there are the two ways of handling hurt, harm, pain, suffering. They either bring us, bring out the best in us or bring out the worst. It's our choice, it's our attitude, it's our understanding or lack of it that will determine. Okay. That's a saying. Um, I also say hurt, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, H U R T, hurt people. They hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. But not always the case. Sometimes hurt people, they heal people. They heal people. They are agents of, of health and healing and wholesomeness. Depending on what has happened in the heart, it comes from the heart, you see. See, those who take after <clears throat> the, the nature of Christ, you know, for example, Christ, when, when he saw his suffering, brought us healing, brought us health, brought us deliverance, brought us forgiveness. We're worshiping for that. But then, Satan. <laughs> If you read uh, Revelation chapter 12 about war in heaven, yeah, he said that that, uh, the, the, that old dragon, that dragon, thought about Satan, was cast out. He said that uh, woe to the earth because that, you know, that accuser of the accuser of the brethren had been cast out. Say that, and then his, 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 um, his furious, he's angry, yeah. He is angry because he knows the days are short. His days are short, so he's he's he cast out, and so he's he's just just going to a full destroying and seeking who to devour and causing mayhem and destruction, you know. And he's doing that with increased rapidity, and and he's doing that you know with, with increased devastation because he knows that his days are short. So he's like a wounded bear. So that's like a wounded bear. He's vindictive. So those who, who get hardened and get vindictive, they, they, they follow after Satan. They're inspired by Satan. If I suffer this thing, they, are, they want other, other people to suffer it too. I'm not the only one that, that will suffer it. The other people will suffer it and say, never, no one again should suffer it. It's our attitude. So suffering, is, I just want to read this. I got it from uh, somewhere. Uh, but I couldn't get the, who, 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 who wrote it. So I didn't show. Let me read it anyway. Say so suffering is a tool God uses to get our attention and to accomplish his purposes in our lives. It is designed to build our trust in him, but suffering requires the right response if it is to be successful in accomplishing God's purposes. I agree. Suffering focuses us to turn from trusting our own resources to to living by faith in God's resources. Suffering is not in itself virtuous. Yes, we don't go worshiping suffering or inviting it. Nor is it a sign, nor is it a sign of holiness. It's not. So it's not, it's not a matter of okay, if you are suffering, you are holy. No, no. Whether you are righteous or, 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 or not, suffering happens. It's how we and and let nobody say it's God that says it's torturing me. God does say do not take pleasure in afflicting sons of men. Okay, God does not tempt anybody with evil. But when he comes, or when he allows it, it's for a purpose. It is also not a means of gaining points with God. Yes, don't go God and say, see what I've suffered. <laughs> no, no. Not of subduing the flesh as an asceticism. Yeah? Suffering is not okay. Let me suffer my flesh. You know, like some people if, uh, uh, is it the Filipinos? They when they flagellate, they you know to the point of bleeding, kill themselves, and they bleed that suffering. Uh -uh. 
whatever possible suffering to be avoided. We try to avoid it. Yeah? Even Christ said, look, if, if, Lord, if it's your will, let this cup pass over me. But he acted. He submitted himself to the Father's will. Praise God. I hope I've made my point. I want to read this scripture to in closing. Hmm. What is this? There's another scripture that is relevant. I need to read. Yes, 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 yes. I need to read these two scriptures. Two scriptures. And I think that will help us. They will help us to. Um... Yes. Okay, first, first of all, let me just open Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Two Corinthians. Chapter one. What does it tell us? Uh, New King James Version, where are you? I like the I like to read it from NKJV. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three. That's a good one. I'll, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? What does it, say? it says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless his name now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. The Father of mercies. Even your suffering. Yeah? The Father of mercies hovering over you. He extends his mercies to you. He doesn't say, God, have abandoned me. Oh, God is punishing me. He's Father of mercies. Yeah? I'm going to fall comfort. God of all comfort. comfort in every situation. Say, who comforts us in all our tribulation? How many of them? All. All our troubles, all our tribulation, all our pains, all our sufferings. He comforts us in all our tribulation. That we may. Ah, see the reason? In order that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. With the comfort, yeah, with which we ourselves have been comforted by God. So God comforts us in our uh, uh, problems and difficulties and, and troubles and pains and deposits something in us, His comfort in excess, so that when we see somebody else who is going through difficulty, we have the empathy and, and, and can reach out and comfort them with the same comfort that we have been comforted by God. I love that scripture. I love it. I love it. That some of the positive examples we see, people who have used their 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 pain productively. The last one, the last scripture, the same Second Corinthians, chapter four, chapter four, chapter four. Let me read it. Verse sixteen. Let me read it. Ah, okay. Yes, I read that, and I, I, I hope, I hope. Please feel free to to write something. I'm going to check. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to check what people have commented. And uh, yeah, sixteen or seventeen says, um, mm, okay. In fact, I want to start from yeah, sixteen. Okay, it says therefore we do not lose heart. Oh, don't you ever lose heart? Don't you ever give up? I don't care what is happening in your life. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Ah. We do not lose heart. Too. Don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare give up. Don't say God has abandoned me. Yeah? Yes? Ah. Okay. Even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Something is happening inside. It's producing something. You are not going to die. For our light affliction. Okay, this is what you call in putting it or putting it in perspective. You must say, Yay, yay. What I'm suffering, what I'm going through. No, I've done. Oh no, this is beyond me. He, he puts it, he helps me to put it in perspective. Say you see, call it light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, I don't care how long this last is, it's for a moment, it will not last forever. Ah, the word of God has, has condemned it, has limited it, has limited it, has bracketed it, it's for a moment. 
and for our light affliction which is brought for the moment is working for us this is where i kind of rub my hand on my chest and my belly it is working for me i have an employer hey <laughs> it is working for me it's producing something for me my the suffering the pain is working for it's working for us it is working for us yes you know yeah yeah I'm, you know you know and, and that is that yeah, yeah that, i have some workers there you know the workers the pain they say, yeah they are working for me yeah mm. they are producing something what are they producing say they are working for us a far <laughs> more exceeding an eternal weight of glory it's working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory that is what the, that's the output the input is the trial yeah your 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 life or your body is the system you know your heart you know and then and then the it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. I, you know, according to you know, by the power of God, it's working. All things work together for good. God is producing something good and it's working, working, working. And then the output, when it delivers what it produces, the output is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Ah, but they give a, a, a condition there in verse 18. Say, while we do not look at the things which are seen, don't look, don't focus on the things that's happening, don't focus on the circumstances, don't focus on, on, on who said this to you, who uh, um, gossiped about you, who was bad part to you, who is causing it. Don't focus on them, don't get distracted. Do not look on the things which are seen, but look at the things that are not seen, those things that is going to produce. You've not seen it yet. The Bible says that if we have hope, if we hope for something, then we hope for it, knowing that it will come. You know, I hope the same, the same hope read in, in Romans chapter uh, 5, that that hope does not disappoint. It does not disappoint. Say, we look at the things that are not seen. Say, that which is seen is not, not hope. We no longer hope. Yeah? Look at that eternal weight of glory. Imagine it, focus on it, thank God for it. Bible says that Jesus, you know, uh, uh, for the joy that was set before him in, in Hebrews 12, you know, um, I think that's two. For the joy that was set before him, he endured, he endured the cross, the cross, uh, talking about suffering, he endured the excruciating pain of the cross. He endured the humiliation of the cross. He endured the oppression of the cross. He endured. So you keep your eyes on that which is set before you, that eternal weight of glory. Far more, it is far more exceeding than eternal weight of glory. The, the suffering is light. <laughs> the reward, the glory is weighty. Hmm. It's interesting. The suffering is for a moment, it's transient, no matter how long it lasted. The reward is far, is eternal. Is eternal. Exceeding. We say, why we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? Focus on the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I think I leave it here. I leave it here. Let me see if people comment and see. Praise God. Oh Lord, what's 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 this? What's this? What's this? What's happening? Okay. Um, please need to see. Just read that word. People come comment here. I don't need to forget that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh huh. Woo! Comment. Okay, yes, I like it. Thank you, uh, Carol. Thank you very much. Uh, NST, NST Williams, God bless you. Good, yes, yes. Good evening to you too, and to yours. Uh, praise God. Uh, I like it. The Lord will definitely vindicate us as we patiently wait on Him, and people will see it. Yes, it will be evident to all. Praise God. The Bible says that when He shall come to be glorified in the saints. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same says, we will all shine in Jesus' name. Yes, we will all shine. Praise God. I agree. My sister. Amen. 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 Yeah, may our hearts be soft and not hardened. Amen. Yes, thank you, Laika. We will stay on course to the end. We are not of those that give up, my sister. 
Christine, we are not of those that give up. We are those that, those that press on to the saving of the soul. Because we know, we know what's at the end. Last, and then we have a decision say, may the Lord continue to strengthen our faith. He will. He will not abandon us. He will not desert us. Praise God. Thank you very much for your, all your contributions. I love them. I love them. I love them. Okay. That's it. I end it here. God bless you. I'll see you uh, next week. And um, yes, we have again, feel free to share this. Uh, if there's somebody. And other things we've shared can be found on our YouTube channel, which is CityGate TV. Get all that stuff we have there. And the information about the ministry you can find on our website, which is uh, CityGateMinistries.org.uk. I can send us email and comment and um, inquiries and whatever you want to say to us. You can email us at uh, info at ministries.org.uk. And with that, I say God bless your week. God bless you, keep you, and uh, cause his face to shine upon you permanently. In Jesus' name, I remain Reverend Cyril Okere. And this, you'll be listening to the Sentinel. Au revoir. Bye.